that mountainside Where those tall pine trees seem to touch the sky Where the morning sun shines in the sky On those crystal streams that sparkle by I'm Randy, and welcome to Primitive Passion. My journey started over 40 years ago with the recurve bow. The year was 1971. We were still 10 years away from the microwave of it in this country. But te technology was on the verge of taking off, and so it did over the next four decades. Most of the people followed that technology. That's understandable. But for whatever reason, my younger brother and I chose to go the other way. We went, went from the recurve bow to the long bow, from the long bow to making our own primitive bows, and from there we eventually went on to throwing and hunting with the ancient atlatl spear. Now, now today we're going to start off taking you from beginning to end the making of an Osage primitive bow. And then after that we're going to take you out west to the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming for a hunt with that same bow. And then after, so while you're getting started there, watching uh, the making of this primitive bow, I'm going to go ahead and shoot around this field, and I'll catch back with you in just a little bit, okay? Enjoy. It's a good day to work on bows. It's hot out. We'll be jumping yeah, in the pond before it's over. We've got the most beautiful Osage log that I have ever laid eyes on down here. Kind of zoom in on it, Tim, so we can get a look at it. And this log's been laying in the barn for how many years, Jim? Five, five Six, years. How come it didn't split? I don't know why it just Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that. That is beautiful. That, this would be my upper limb. This would be my lower limb. I went one inch above the center line. One inch above and mark the top of my rest where the arrow will, will light right there. And then I went four inches down for my handle. And what that means is that the upper limb is two inches longer than the bottom limb. The sweet spot of the bow will just about always be within one inch of dead center. So therefore I do not recommend making both limbs the equal size. We'll cut the other side just to the outside of the line, and I can file that down later. Okay. This is getting exciting. Whew. Wow, that is beautiful. That is, rel that is not free there. Got a little wormhole here. We're not going to worry about that now. We had a knot up in here, but that's been cut out. That is a beautiful, nothing more beautiful than Osage. God's gift to the bowyer. Oh, man, I'm going to have a hard time going to sleep tonight. I will be dreaming about this baby. Now, what you'll see is, can you hear the crunch? I can feel the crunch. We're putting on grain here. And every now and then I'll stop and I'll clean it up. Like this right here. I'm not saying that I'm overly excited about this piece of wood, but I did take her to bed with me last night. And lay there for I don't know how long, just caressing the textures of her grain 
every little valley, every little hump. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put it on the wheel, and I'm going to clean up the sides and get them evened out, and then we'll start the tillering process by hand. I'm back on my bow now, the wood rasp. From here on out, I'll work it all down by hand. And as I'm working this bow, I'll, I'll work on this side, and then I'll look at the other side, and I'll just try to keep them matched, equal distance, equal width. I'll just eye it up. I'll just do it by. And once I get it down so far to where it's flexing, then I'll start pushing it like this, and I'll do a rough tillering by looking at where it's bending more than other places, and I'll mark it with a pencil. And Because uh, we've got to get both limbs fairly close and fairly tillered before we actually put the tillering board on it. So I'll be on this for a while. Nobody, you can take a break now if you want. <laughs> Day five. <laughs> Took me forever to get this baby on grain. Had to go through this valley twice. It was very tedious. But anyway, where I messed up is, uh, and I aspire to be a master bowyer, but I realized today more than any other day that I'm far from it. So, where I had filed on the back, on the belly, and then took two big growth rings off, I left myself thin on this end. Basically, I ended up with a weak bow. So, what I did was I cut an inch and a half off both ends. I was at 71 inches, now I'm at 68 inches, and that will put some weight back on this bow, and hopefully it'll be enough, because I don't really want to go any lower on a long bow. Knocks are very, very tricky. Okay. <clears throat> this is not perfect, but I'll be able to clean it out with the sandpaper rolled up and it's close enough. And they're in deep, I'll take them in a little bit deeper later on, but for now they're deep enough where I can get the tillering string on. So we're off to a good start. I'll do the other side, slap a string on it, check the tiller, and then check the weight on the poundage to see if it's up to the mid 50s. Keep your fingers crossed. Looks like we still may have a little bit extra bend in there, so I'm going to take just a little bit more from here over. There you go. I'm going to take a little bit more off. I'd like to do my finished tillering work with a pocket knife. I've seen my little brother take a piece of glass, get very meticulous on it before. Okay, we're just about done with the tillering process. I'm going to see how much weight I've got now. I'm going to measure it out on the scale over here. I picked up some leather lacing yesterday at the... Uh, Michael's? <laughs> not the hobby shop. Michael's. What kind of store is it? I told you it was Michael's. Yeah, well, Michael's is... Uh, is it a hobby shop or what? Fabric. I don't know. Okay, picked this up at the hobby shop yesterday. I picked this up yesterday at the craft store. <laughs> uh, We've been fighting, so it's going to carry on. I just had to watch through 10 minutes of some kind of a fashion show that little buddy was watching. and I finally just couldn't bite my tongue anymore and told her how lame I thought the show was. And then she had to start cutting on Survivor Man, so we're really at odds now. Maybe you can feel the tension. But one good thing about it is I did find out who Heidi Klum is. Is it Heidi Klum or Heidi Klum? Oh, God, stop. <laughs> I found out who Heidi Klum is. It's a really cute girl. Now, as I said earlier, I've got a little bit of a set to this bow. I'm going to lower limb so I didn't get it quite because of where I messed up uh, earlier in the process. The bow shoots great. Tonight Jim's coming over, we're going to work on his bow, and we should have Tim's bow uh, up and shooting here in the next day or two, so we'll get back with you. I'm going to do a round in the field shooting.
Thanks, little buddy. I see you're still with us. That's good. Let me take this shot. Hold on. That did not turn out to be one of the better bows I've done over the years. But it was good enough that I felt comfortable taking it out west on a mule deer hunt in the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming. These are the eras that I made up for that trip. I've got homemade metal heads that I cut out of banding steel that wraps around lumber and sharpen them up with a mule bastard file. I've got crow feathers on the end, fletching it. And for the record, I don't kill crows. I refuse to kill anything that's smarter than me or older than me. So that leaves out crows and the mother oaks. About three days into that hunting trip, I had a stalk on a nice buck, had a tall rack, and I got within 30 yards, which is a good shot out there, and I totally came unglued. I didn't even come close. It's actually very embarrassing, but you'll see it. A few days later, my confidence at an all-time low. A few days later, I got another shot at a mule doe downhill at about 35 yards, and it was a very close miss. The arrow just came right here under the heart. That got my confidence back up, and then it all came down to the last day and the last shot. I'm going to keep shooting this locust bow around the field. You check it out. Hey, this is our first campsite in Wyoming. I've been coming out to the Rocky Mountains for 33 years, and this is the first time I haven't slept on the ground in a tent. So I must be getting salt in my old age. Uh, we've seen some game, but we haven't got any shots yet. We're getting ready to go out this afternoon again, and uh, we're having a really good time. A really good time. The lungs haven't quite adjusted to the high altitude yet, so we'll see what happens. It's our first morning in the high country, and Tim and I just finished a long, steep hike. And uh, I'm out of breath. I'm 55 years old. I've been coming out in the Rocky Mountains for over 30 years now. And the thought passed my mind yesterday evening, how many more years do I have in me? I know it can't go on forever, I've probably only got 55 more good years, and it's all going to come to an end. It's not a cow, it's a little spike. I've never seen a spike elk that small before. It's a bull. We woke up to a cold morning today. And uh, it's a little breezy. Tim and I are going to head down over the mountain. We're going to cross the river. And then we're going to hunt those clearings going up the side of the steep mountain there. And uh, then I'm going to do some scouting for elk. And Tim has got this crazy idea that he's going to hike all the way up to the top of that rock cliff there. 
So all I can say to Tim is good luck with that one because this old man is not going up there. Get on over here, Tim. Hold on, man, we ain't got all day. He's moving kind of slow. He got a bad ankle, he's got a bad knee, he's got a bad leg, his body's falling apart. <laughs> you sure you're gonna make it? I'm gonna make it. Okay, well good luck to you in Valle Covillas. It's, be it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> Tim and I just splitted ways, that little clearing down there through the woods. He's headed up the mountain to that peak. I'm headed across the mountain on this trail right here. And this trail, I do see some deer tracks, but I see a lot of elk sign going right out this trail right here. I'm scouting for next year, but I've also got an, an arrow out of my quiver in case I run into a deer. I have a buck tag and a doe tag. A lot of elk sign in here. Check this out right here. Yeah, that's elk. I've hiked a long ways since the last time I had the camera turned on. I've come across the side of the mountain, parallel in the stream over here. I've enjoyed being alone. Uh, it's a lot of fun filming your friends on a hunt, especially if you're successful with the camera work. And also sometimes you just need to get alone. And I'm alone in a very special spot here and I'm enjoying it. We all three went our separate ways and we're gonna meet up here after a while at camp. I have to admit, most of the time I come out west, I don't harvest game. But uh, it, I've said this many times before, how do you judge the success of a hunt? <sighs> Can't put it in words. <sighs> I crossed the creek a ways back. This morning I started off way up there, walked was around the side of that mountain through those clearings, down below, crossed the creek. Actually, I fell in the creek, the rock was slippery. Now I'm working my way back to camp and I've never been on this stretch of the, of the river and it's beautiful, it's uh, yeah, I've definitely got to come back to here. Well, this is the ninth day out in the Bighorn Mountains and this is the second bath I've taken. Feels really good. But I came out of the water about a half inch from being a woman. Well, a quarter inch, but who's counting? We're getting ready to go out again tonight. Tonight's our last night. Tomorrow morning it's our last hunt. We're heading out tomorrow afternoon. But you can see our fourth and final camp. It's just beautiful. Well, I'm going to go ahead and catch a big fat brookie here. And then we're going to head out the road and uh, give it one more evening chance. I hit that deer. I hit that deer. Oh god, that was exciting. It was a pine tree right in front of it. I couldn't see where I hit it because it was a long shot. The arrow went up. The deer was partly behind that pine tree, quartering away. And uh, the arrow just kind of dropped over it, the edge of the pine tree. And I didn't realize I'd hit it until it started running off. I'm not sure, exactly sure where I hit it, so we'll wait a while before we trail. Okay, we're by the blood trail here. Uh, last evening of the hunt. But we've got a good blood trail here, and uh, we're followed out through here right now. We're pretty excited about it. Oh yeah, look, we started opening up here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, she's beautiful. Um, this is very exciting. 
you know, she died quickly. I always feel sad when I kill a deer, but I'm happy too, but I'm sad, but I'm especially excited to be out here on the last night of our hunt and to make this 40 yard shot with the Osage bow. And I'm, I'm very, very thankful. And I appreciate you guys, all your help too. And I always like to stop and just have a, a sacred moment of thanks and a prayer uh, at a moment like this. It's warming up out here today. That turned out to be one of the longer shots I've made in my life. I could have been pushing 50 yards and I normally don't take a shot that far. But the deer was quartering away, which meant if the arrow hit it anywhere in the side, it would angle up into the vitals. There was a pine tree that was standing behind, and I could only see this part back here. So I shot about two feet to the left, which is the same as moving your bow about a quarter an inch at that distance. And the arrow, you can't see it striking the deer because it dropped right over that pine tree and dropped right in behind the shoulder for a very humane double lung shot. We enjoyed having you today. I hope you'll join us again. In the future, we'll take you on some actual hunts with the ancient atlatl spear. And believe me, you do not want to miss that. I'm gonna take a long shot here. Oh, that felt good. That felt really good. Long live the longbow. Got lost down on Myrtle Road. Shot a flare up in the sky. No one came cause no one cared. Did you leave me there? Did you hope I'd die? I'd die. I die, I die, I die, I die, I die.